It sucks being in limbo. I mean, it sucks to, to think that you might possibly be, you know, out of, out of an apartment. Some low-income tenants are worried they could soon be homeless. They live in an apartment complex in Hillsborough and found out their rent is going up by more than $300 a month. Thank you for joining us here at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Mulco. One of the residents says there is just no way they can afford that increase. Blair Best is here now. Blair, with that big bill on the way, do they have any options? Well, they can't seem to get any answers, David. And this all started a couple of months ago when tenants at Alma Gardens Apartments in Hillsboro got notice that starting in November, they would be facing a rent increase, something many of them can't afford. And these are tenants now who were previously homeless and now living off rental assistance and fixed incomes. Take a look. On the corner of Northeast Cherry Drive in Hillsboro, in the heart of the Aranco neighborhood, is Alma Garden Apartments for low-income seniors. Next month marks three years since Michael Ebersol moved in. Before that, he was homeless. Well, I lived in a truck for about a year and a half, running around Beaverton, Hillsboro you know, being chased from one parking lot to the another. And Ebersol now has a Section 8 housing voucher and lives well, off of Social Security, which is about $1,600 a month. He, along with other tenants, just received this notice from Income Property Management Company that says starting in November, rent will go up by $362 a month. Yeah, there's no way my budget can hold that. There's, I might, I'm broke a week before payday as it is. The highest you know? rent can be increased in Oregon this year is by 9.9%. That's according to the state's Office of Economic Analysis. Ebersol is facing you know, a 33% that, increase. Just, He's tried reaching out to his property management and housing authority, but can't get answers. That's putting me out on the street. You know, come on. I already came from there. 12 years ago, I've been working to get in line, you know, I get angry about it. I wasn't surprised. Uh, everything's going up. Um, not happy about it. Scott Duke also lives in the building and received a similar notice. Just telling me that there was going to be uh, an increase. He lives on a fixed income and worries he won't be able to afford it. It means I'll be probably living up in the mountains by a river somewhere in a tent. He also hasn't been given any answers as to why the increase or what he's supposed to do. It sucks being in limbo. I mean, it sucks to, to think that you might possibly be, you know, out of, out of an apartment. It's like dehumanizing, you know, it's very dehumanizing. It's, it just takes away from us. Again, this year, rent in Oregon can't be raised above 9.9%, but there are limited exemptions to that cap when it comes to affordable housing providers. We reached out to the management team to see if this increase is part of those exemptions, but haven't heard back yet. Also important to note that tenants with Section 8 housing vouchers only pay a third of their rent. The rest is picked up by the voucher, but in this case, the increase is still putting these tenants in a tough spot. David Laurel. Well, let's hope someone listens to these residents and they do get some answers. Thank you, Blair. The mayor of Vancouver thinks someone might be targeting her home in a politically motivated attack. The latest incident happened last night when someone tried to light her garage on fire. Bryant Clerkley has been following the story for us and he spoke with the mayor, Bryant. Hey, Laurel, Mayor Ann McInerney Ogle says her home was burglarized on Sunday and then someone tried to light her home on fire the next day. She says her husband confirmed Confronted the arsonist but could not get a good look at him. Officers got to their home near the intersection of East 35th Street and F Street around 930 last night. After someone reported an arson in progress, the mayor's husband was able to put out the fire. Officers set up a perimeter around the area and used a canine in an attempt to find the suspect, but the person was not found as of yet. But we've been victims of crime before. This is just escalated up and it might very well be something political. It might not be. Luckily, there were no injuries. The mayor was at a city council meeting at the time of the reported arson. Vancouver police arson and the city's fire marshal's office will continue to investigate this. David, a burglary and an arson. You can understand her concern. Thank you, Bryant. Let's bring you an update now on wildfires burning throughout our area. The fires that started near Salem and Estacada on Friday have now been contained. 
Evacuation orders there lifts, lifted, though we learned that a fire near Estacada burned a home and an outbuilding. In Lane County, evacuation levels were lowered for the Cedar Creek fire. That's from a level three to two for Westfer and parts of Oak Ridge. Now near the fire line, firefighters are clearing burned trees. That is a critical step because those trees could be deadly if they fall. We're on what we refer to as Division Yankee. Uh, so this was the piece of ground that we did a burnout operation on a few days ago. Um, and what we do now is it's our job to come in and uh, control the line. Um, so the first step of doing that is coming through with the professional fallers. They'll go through and eliminate the uh, tree hazards. Well, the Cedar Creek fire has burned over 92,000 acres. Meanwhile, evacuation orders remain in place near the south side of Mount St. Helens because of the Kalama fire. So far, it's burned about 107 acres. You can see just how steep, though, of an area is burning there. Fire crews there working on containment lines. Peabot has closed part of Northwest Everett because of a sinkhole in the road. That's in Portland's Pearl District between 11th and 12th, and you can see it here in this video. It opened up around 8.30 last night. Peabot says crews will take a closer look at the hole today to figure out just how long it will take to repair the street and how long this closure will last. Glad they caught it before it got worse. No school until further notice in Ridgefield. Teachers there have been on strike since Friday with another bargaining session early this morning. Teachers say they want more fun for mental health supports and special education students, uh, among other things. Updates as we get them here on air and online anytime at KGW.com. It has been tough for a lot of families this year who've had to absorb the cost of inflation at the grocery store and elsewhere. Now, with an impending nationwide railroad worker strike, there are concerns about how it will affect people in our area. Christine Pitawanich looked into it. Here in the Pacific Northwest, industries rely on shipping and transportation, particularly on the nation's railways. About 30 percent of goods in the U.S. are transported long distance via rail, says Portland State University marketing and business professor Tom Gilpatrick. Rail for the United States is a big deal. A higher percentage of our freight moves by rail, for example, than in Europe. And in our region, that includes a number of commodities, including things like lumber. I think things like coal, like wheat, which is really big in the Northwest. We do have a lot of wheat is transported for us down the Columbia uh, and exported, but rail is really big. That's why the expected National Railroad Workers Strike has a lot of people worried about the cost of it all. I've seen estimates of $2 billion a day impact uh, as a sort of loss to the economy due to the rail strike. That extra cost, Gilpatrick says, could be passed down to us as the strain on the railway system spreads over to other modes of shipping and transportation. And we, we've already had some disruptions, certainly in food supply chain, so this would be you know, added to the list of woes. Gilpatrick says it's unclear how fast we could see an impact on our wallet, but it's likely there will be one if the strike starts and lingers. I think that there would be a bit of a lagged effect, but um, what you're going to see is you're going to see people, and I would suspect even now, um, transport and purchasing and pricing reflects the anticipation of a potential rail disruption. For now, the anticipation is building as two unions with 57,000 conductors and engineers across the country are saying they're prepared to strike on Friday if there's no deal on a contract they say addresses their quality of life concerns. In Portland, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. With today's